fun being able to pick music. Right? You go to a science conference, usually it's so nerdy, you never get to pick music. But, <laughs> but here, you know, I thought, well, Tom Petty just died, so we got to honor Tom Petty, right? Yeah, isn't he great? Yeah. But also, the immune system rocks, and I wanted everyone to, to know that. I, I wanted to t talk to you about the immune system today. I'm really excited to tell you about it. Um, I think in, in, in meditating this morning and trying to come with my intention for the day and what would make this day amazing, it would be if some of you left knowing a little bit about the immune system, and also if I could get a few of you to eat a few less carbohydrates. So those are the, my two. So if you want to make my day, those are the two things. Uh, all right. Uh, so um, to start off with, so the immune system. You know, it sounds all sciency. Boy, you know, this is. Um, uh, I'm back in biology class, and I, I know my daughters are in high schools. They they hate biology. So, uh, <laughs> but it's really cool. How many of you have an immune system? All of you have an immune system, you know? So immune system really rocks. So uh, let me go to the next slide. All right, so um, Nate, why don't you hit that? I want to show you what the immune system can do. No, um, you, got, you got to put the mouse on the black square and click. That's it. Great. Well, so the little cell up there is the immune cell. The big cell is a tumor cell. When the immune cell sees a tumor cell, it does what I call the kiss of death. It secretes enzymes, pokes holes in the tumor, and the tumor just implodes. That's called apoptosis, a big word. But, but, um, but then the immune cell just trucks on over to the next tumor cell, does the kiss of death, kills another tumor cell. The immune cell goes to the next tumor cell, does the kiss of death, and kills another tumor cell. So what we're trying to do in cancer immunotherapy is really easy. Um, we're just trying to make more immune cells kill more tumor cells. So it's a lot like the army, and you heard all about the military this morning, but it's the same way. We just want these immune cells to kill tumor cells. And so that's as simple as it is. You know, it's not boring biology. It's really cool, actually. Um, and why do we have an immune system? Do you know why we have an immune system in general? Yeah, it's to fight viruses. It's to fight, you know, so my wife has a virus right now. She says she's all fatigued, all this upper respiratory. In fact, I'm not worried about her. She'll get better. Uh, because, <laughs> because her immune system will once again save her life. That's why we have an immune system, and that's why the immune system rocks. So how can we use this to, to help cancer patients? Well, we already are. Um, look at this. These are the approvals just in the last four years of all of the drugs uh, that were approved, to, uh, the immune drugs that were approved to treat cancer. We went with a drought, so like a 30-year drought with no approvals from the immune system, and then all of a sudden, all of these. So there's a, a rocketing number of trials. We're helping so many patients. And, and why is it important for the uh, immune system to, to focus on immunotherapy? It's because what do patients want when they come to our clinic? No, no patient has ever said, um, please help me live three months longer. Everyone wants to live 10 years longer, 20 years longer, but guess what? These immune cells live a very long time in the body, a very long time. So how many of you have gotten the polio vaccine recently? No one got the polio vaccine recently? How many of you have gotten polio? No, no one's gotten, oh, we have polio back there, yeah. So, so, so really, um, you don't see polio, and yet we got our vaccines when we, we can't, don't even remember most of you guys, right? Why? Because our immune cells live for decades in our body. So if we can trigger the immune system against cancer, we can get a very long, very, very long persistent response. Some of my patients I'll show have very long responses. I see them in clinic. Guess what we talk about? I say, you better watch what you eat. You better watch your cholesterol. You better watch all those other things because I don't think melanoma is going to get you. Uh, so, um, so, so that's what, because the immune system can have a very long-lasting effect. Now, we still have a lot of work to do, right? Because um, while melanoma, some lung cancers, bladder cancer, uh, can stimulate the immune, the immune system, uh, many cancers are still really hard to treat with the immune system. But I, I think one day in, in a, we're going to get all of the cancers to be treatable with the immune system. I really, really strongly believe that. Um, and it's not just a belief, it's the data that we're seeing in the lab that, that makes me believe that. 
So these are just the ways to stimulate the immune system. This is the boring gobbledygook. But, um, but this is what, uh, one way is vaccines. Vaccine, just like the polio vaccine, puts some of the, the target in there, tells the immune system, go after that. And so the immune cells proliferate, then they go after the tumor. So does this work? Well, we did a trial with a vaccine versus no vaccine, and we got twice as many patients to respond and get their tumor to shrink. So we know this can work. Do we have to make improvements? For sure we have to make improvements, and this is one of the improvements that we're making. Uh, this is a person with melanoma. Melanoma starts in the skin, and then it goes everywhere, and th this person had the melanoma uh, go onto the, the scalp, it metastasized, what we call. So we gave them a vaccine, really in the arm, but the vaccine triggered immune cells that then went through the bloodstream to his scalp. And look, I just saw him about a month ago. He's doing great. It's been several years now. He's really doing great. So his immune cells are circulating around. Uh, and, and any tumor that, that is getting out of hand, those immune cells are circulating around. So he's doing great. I, I, I expect him to do great for a long time. But the way we did that was we made the vaccine look like a virus, because we already said that's why our immune system's around to fight viruses. So you can't just give the, the vaccine, say this is the tumor. We mixed in something that made it look like a virus. So the immune system thought it was attacking a virus. So that's one of the innovations we're doing. Make your vaccine look like a virus. The, the other thing we're doing is trying to make the tumor itself into a vaccine. Tumors have a lot of antigens to stimulate the immune system. So one thing we can do is inject the tumor with things that make it look like a virus. So if you inject the tumor with things that look like the virus, the immune cells can then trigger, go throughout the body, and start uh, um, attacking the tumor other places as well. Because that's why cancer kills people, because it goes and spreads. Any one tumor, we can usually just cut out with a great surgeon. But, but it, the problem is it spreads. And so here's an example. So this is a, a CAT scan, and it's cutting this way. And so I'll give you a little anatomy here. Here's the heart the lungs. This is the left lung. This is the right lung. And you can see where the yellow arrow is, is the one we injected to make it look like a virus. But all of these tumors here were not injected. But then after we gave the therapy, all of the tumors went away, even the ones we didn't inject. It's because we stimulated the production of immune cells that went throughout the body to get the ones we don't inject. And so that's important because uh, there are also cells in there that we can't even see on that scan. Uh, so we need immune cells to go, uh, go, go fish them out. And so that's why we're trying to always stimulate the immune cells to go throughout the body. Now, um, Bob talked about personalized medicine. So one thing we're trying to do to try to get diseases other than melanoma to be treated is to personalize the therapies, to take someone's cancer and look at all of the antigens in that cancer, make up a vaccine, and then give it back to the patient. So we started this a number of years ago. Since then, a number of companies have started uh, this. I think it's going to be an important thing, because everyone's cancer is a little bit different to make a personalized vaccine. And here's uh, um, uh, uh, how we met uh, Tricia and the whole family. Uh, Danny was fighting. Uh, it came down to MD Anderson, and we really uh, were in the foxhole together for for, for a time, and Danny was patient zero on this. He, he was the patient before this was even a trial. We got special permission from the Food and Drug Administration to, to give this, and so he was very courageous in, in doing this, and, and I can tell you, just a little, you probably know Danny, but, but um, uh, just the relationship with Danny and his family and, and his kids, uh, Casey, Riley, uh, um, uh, Jenna, and Max, were, was inspirational, and, and I, I can tell you that uh, I learned a lot just from hanging out with them. And, and to see that relationship. I'm a father myself, and I say, you know, if, if you have a relation like that with your kids, that's a life well lived. Uh, so that's. Um... So he was brave enough to be patient zero. And since then, we put on, we, we made it into a formal protocol, and we, we put on. Uh, over a dozen patients. Now we're focusing on colon cancer now with it. We're having patients already benefit. We're learning a lot from this, and so we owe it to Danny for being patient zero. Uh, and we're really excited about this approach. We feel that we can give vac personalized vaccines and T cell therapies uh, to these patients to try to, to get immunotherapy out of melanoma and into colon cancer and pancreatic cancer and other kinds of cancers. So. 
Another way that we've been trying to, see, I, I knew there was going to be military people here today. <laughs> Another way that we're trying to uh, um, uh, attack the, immune, uh, the, the cancer is by triggering the immune system. So if you can imagine your immune cells being able to blow up a cell like that, that's pretty scary, right? Uh, um, uh, and have you ever heard of someone with rheumatoid arthritis or autoimmune disease, lupus, or other things? Autoimmune disease can be very deadly. So if your immune, immune cells are like tanks, they're circulating in there, they can, yeah, they blow up virally infected cells and cancers, that's great, but you don't want them blowing up your heart or your lungs or any organs you want to keep. Uh, so that's, um, uh, that's a challenge. So the uh, uh, evolution put in a bunch of breaks onto the immune cells. So it's the tanks have a bunch of breaks on them. Why? Because it can be extremely deadly if they just started throwing their mortars everywhere, right? And so, uh, but when a person has cancer, we want to start removing some of those breaks and letting the tanks run loose a little bit. And so we um, uh, and others have developed antibodies against these breaks that trigger the tanks to move. And Jim Allison, who works down at MD Anderson, was the father of this kind of approach um, and, and has done a, a great job. So you see when normally the breaks are on in the, in the tanks, the T cells cannot kill the tumors. But if we take a, a drug and remove the breaks, then the immune cells can then attack the tumors. And the important part of this is that when the immune cells are activated, these are some of the first patients we treated. Actually, when I still worked up here at the National Cancer Institute, we, we used this drug and treated patients years ago, over 15 years ago. And some of these patients are still doing great right now. Why? Because their immune cells are activated and circulating, and they're essentially cured because they have uh, uh, activated immune cells circulating throughout the body. And this is one of the patients. Um, I, I promised him I'd try to make him famous, so I'd try to show his picture <laughs> every, every talk. He's really asked me to do that. Uh, so, um, uh, but he's, he's, he's doing great right now. Now I just get to see him once a year, and I hear about his whole year, because he, he was fighting for his life. He had tumor everywhere. We gave him a bunch of experimental therapies. Uh, gave him a really toxic therapy, put him in the ICU on a ventilator. I mean, he, he uh, really had some touch and go moments. But then we, uh, Jim's drug came out and we gave him this drug and he, everything just shrunk away and it stayed away. And now I just see him once a year, hear about his year. It's really fantastic. And he's, he's a model to be, oh, we got to sequence his genes because he's, you know, over 80 doing great right now, you know. So. Now, there are a lot of other brakes and, and gas pedals on that, you know, I could bore you with a bunch of names, uh, but, but we're not going to do that. Uh, just to show you that if you mix some of these together, you could even do better. You see, this is a mouse experiment, and if you mix different brake removers together, you can get survival of the mice a lot, and it's a lot better. And I know what you're thinking, you know. Oh, Mouse experiments, what do they have to do with humans? Everyone's cured cancer in mice. I hear that all the time. But how much do you think we are like a mouse? If I sequenced your genes and sequenced a mouse genes, you think you're like 50% like a mouse? 60? Who thinks you're 60? I have a 70. Anyone over 70? Anyone for 80? Anyone for 90? Yeah. All right, that's the answer. We are 90% like a mouse if you just sequence our DNA. So just because you're the great homo sapien, don't get too big headed because <laughs> you're 90% like a mouse, okay? And so if you do the mouse models well, you can roll this into the clinic. That's how Jim's drug got into the clinic. He, he did it in a mouse and it worked really well in a, in a person. So, so um, uh, this study that was done in a mouse, putting these two drugs together, anti-CCA4 and anti-PD1, that's the name of the drugs, um, uh, worked really well. And then when we did it in patients, now this is a CAT scan taken this way. So the head's that way, the feet are that way, looking up. And so uh, we're bread loafing this way. And so um, this is the left lung, this is the right lung, this is the heart. And all of these little circles shouldn't be here but they're all gone, all gone rapidly with this combination of two antibodies taking two breaks off uh, of the immune cells. So, and this is what we call a waterfall plot. It's the shrinkage of tumor, and you can see in these melanoma patients that had little hope before, look how much tumors in each of these is a different patient. Most of the patients have had tumors that shrink. Now, we have a lot of work to do because some of them didn't have their tumors shrink, 
but a lot of them did. And it's this combination of antibodies that we figured out in a mouse worked, so we did it in people. So mouse models done in the right way uh, um, do apply to people. So finally, I want to talk about a, a third approach that we use the immune system, and that's T cell therapy. We, we give the T cells themselves. In every tumor, there's immune cells in there trying to work. Are they working well enough? Obviously not if they're coming to our clinic because the tumor is growing. So what we've learned to do is take those tumors out, tease out the immune cells, and help them grow with growth factors to very large numbers, to billions, and then we give them back through the vein, and then they go find the tumor throughout the body. That's called T-cell therapy. And this is a patient uh, that we treated probably a dozen years ago. She had just graduated from college uh, out in the Northwest, and she came in to see us. I was there rounding with her parents. And she had a tumor there on her shoulder. This is her kidney, so this is in her gut, um, and this is in her lungs. Uh, and so then we gave her the T cells, and she was, she's been fine ever since. In fact, we lost touch with her. She had lost her insurance, moved to Alaska. So we had to track her down for the, the, the trial a, a couple years ago. And we found out she, she lives in a small town in Colorado now. I called her up. She's doing great. Uh, she doesn't even see a doctor anymore. I told her, you should probably go see a doctor once in a while. <laughs> but wh why is she doing so well, not even seeing a doctor? It's because those billions of immune cells we gave her are still in her body, and they're still fighting and watching out for cancer cells uh, and, and killing cancer cells if they come up. And so I, I expect her to do really well. I think she should go to a doctor to check her cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the survival uh, of patients on our T-cell trial. So this is, um, uh, this is where everyone wants to be after several years just doing well. So we have a number of patients that are, that are really doing well. Um, this is an example. This is a kid that came to me when he was in high school. He came in from Georgia, and he, um, he, had, he woke up one day. He couldn't see out of his left side because the, uh, the brain on the right side had a tumor that bled. So we... Uh, got that cut out by, by a neurosurgeon, and then we treated him with a number of therapies. They didn't work. So then we grew T cells. We gave him T cells, and he's done great ever since. I, I got to meet his girlfriend. It's been years now. Got, got, got a, he's on his second job after college. He, you know, at first we were like, got to get this guy through high school. But now, now he's through college, jobs, uh, girlfriend, and it's really great. He wrote a book about his experience. I encouraged him to write a book. So uh, to inspire other people. So this is on Amazon. Yeah, um, it's called uh, Changing the Game Plan about his experience for cancer. So look that up. Um, so now we have technology, as you heard from Bob. We have so, so many ways now to, to attack the immune system. We can take immune cells from people's blood now and put genes into those immune cells to direct them to attack different kinds of cancers. It sounds space age, right? But this treatment called the CAR T cell was just approved. Two companies approved this this year for lymphoid malignancies. Uh, this year, called CAR T cells, um, you take blood from a patient, you put this gene in, you teach it to, uh, that teaches it to fight lymphoma, you, you give the cells back, and patients are doing really, really well with that CAR T cell therapy. Uh, you can put other genes in, you can put genes in to try to find the tumor. You can put, the tumor's smart though, the tumor puts out a lot of nasty substances that can kill the immune cells. So there are genes also that we're putting into the T cells to arm them and put a gas mask on, just like in the battlefield, so they can get into that nasty microenvironment of the tumor. And patients are doing really well uh, with this treatment where we put in this receptor to try to put that gas mask on the, on the immune cells. So, and, and then finally I wanted to show you this patient of mine, he, he came um, uh, to, um, patients are amazing. He, we tried a bunch of stuff, it wasn't working. He got disease coming back in his liver and he came and he said, I know this is it, but you know, I want you to know you, you, you really tried very hard. I know you did everything you could. You know, pa patients are amazing in that part of life. They're, they're worried about how I feel. So I've, I've learned so much about from patients uh, at that stage, um, and it's a real honor to treat them. But we grew up T cells. Here's the, the tumor in his liver, and now he's fine. So he comes to my house and parties with our lab, and it's really, it's really great. You know, he's doing really, really well. But I wanted to show this because this is what's called a PET scan. Has, has anyone heard of a PET scan? 
It's, it, these aren't scans you do on your dogs. This is, <laughs> this is uh, um, uh, a scan that where they actually just label sugar. And cancer loves sugar so much that we can just label sugar and give it to patients, and the sugar uptake tells us where the cancer is, you know? So this is the, in the liver. You see how bright that is? That's because the tumor's taken up sugar. So I get the question all the time, and you know, I'm an immunologist, I'm not an expert in this, but, but, but they ask me, doctor, what should I eat? So first I say, well, call Kristen. <laughs> but, 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 um, uh, but, but I also have some opinions uh, about this. Um, I see on the PET scan that tumors love sugar so much. I say, you should really watch your, your sugar intake. Now, we need more data, but we have a lot of data about tumors taking up sugar. And uh, we know for many, many years, actually for over 50 years, we've known that tumors love to take up sugar and metabolize it in a pathway, you don't have to remember this, called glycolysis, meaning breaking down of sugar. That's the pathway they love. There's a lot of reasons why they might want to do this. It helps them build the bricks and mortar for them to, to reproduce. It helps them build protective molecules so they don't get killed by the immune system. It helps them in many ways to take this sugar and take it down this glycolysis pathway. That's ironclad, that, that tumor cells love sugar and they love to undergo this glycolytic pathway to metabolize the sugar. We don't quite understand exactly why they do it, but we do know they need to do it. And, and so for that reason, now we need a lot more dietary studies. You know, um, we, we need a lot more randomized studies to show uh, one diet, patients do better than others with cancer. So I always tell my patients, I don't have the information that I need to really advise this. But from what I know, cut down on your sugar. That's what I, that's what I tell them. And, um, and so most of this stuff, you know, <laughs> got to be very careful with. Um, and, and now I love going to the grocery store myself. I'm, I'm an avid label reader. I, I just love reading labels. I love saturating myself in the grocery Grocery stores are amazing, you know. Um, and, and in the grocery store, there is stuff you could actually buy. It's only 5% of the stuff. But, but it still turns out to be quite a bit of stuff, you know. Uh, so so that's, that's a challenge. And, and so some of my patients say, well, well, can I just eat bread and rice? That's not sugar, is it? Well, th that's like taking sugar and just going like this. Because uh, uh, bread and rice just turns to sugar very fast in, in your body. So, so um, I just wanted to show you something about the, the American diet. This is how much carbohydrates normally in, in the American diet. The Atkins diet um, cuts down on carbohydrates, but has a lot of protein. Um, and this is the diet that now, I don't have all the data, but the diet that I think, that I put myself on over the last four years, and, and I've been able to sustain it, is the ketogenic diet. And, and what it is, is it's uh, the protein you gotta be a little careful of in my book because protein can turn to sugar by the liver. It's called, big name, gluconeogenesis. So if you wanna impress someone and say, did you know the liver can convert protein into sugar through gluconeogenesis. Uh, so, so, that's, um, uh, so that's why I tell people probably moderate on the protein, low on the carbohydrates. But you know what the safest thing to eat is? It's crazy. Fat. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? You know, like when I eat butter, some people think, well, well you're a doctor. Are you trying to commit suicide? <laughs> it's actually, in my book, the safest thing to eat. Uh, um, it's clean burning fuel. And, and when you cut your carbs and you eat mostly fat, your body learns to just burn fat. It becomes a fat burner. So that's, that's really what I recommend, knowing that I always give the caveat, we don't have all the data. But that's, that's what I personally recommend. Now I want to talk a little bit about stress. And, and well, I'll, I just want to say one more thing about the diet. So, so I'm a hard-hitting scientist, and so why am I thinking about diet? Shouldn't I just be, you know, we're drug developers, clinical trials. Shouldn't I just say, uh, it's, it's all about the drugs. You know, that, that's what a classic doctor would say, right? But then my own sugar started going up a little bit. You know, my mom had adult diabetes. So, so my own sugar, sugar. So of course, as a doctor, as a hard hitting doctor, I just started taking a bunch of medicines, you know? Not only did they make me feel bad, but it didn't really work very well. It wasn't until I went on this low carb, high fat, moderate protein diet that my numbers just went bing. And, and guess what I had to do? I had to stop my blood pressure medicine because I was getting dizzy in the mornings. My blood pressure was so low, I, I, had, to, I had to throw it out. And, and so, I, I was really astounded as a doctor who 
um, had gotten maybe a 30-minute lecture on nutrition in all of my medical training. Um, I, 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 I really was really astounded that how profoundly effective changing your diet could be to your health. I, mean, I used to get tired in the afternoons. I never get tired now. My, my sugar doesn't fluctuate like that. I feel great. And, and so I think um, uh, that's how personally I, I was a convert to this. And the same thing with stress. So stress causes a lot of things, you know. Um, I, don't worry about this diagram, but, but the yellow stuff is bad. Uh, so it's... it's <laughs> It's, it's adrenaline, epinephrine. You know, when you're stressed, your adrenaline's going off, adrenal glands make it, your nerves make it. And, and so um, also, uh, your, your, your adrenal glands also make steroids, which are not good for your immune system. So when you're stressed, all of this stuff goes off. And when you have a cancer and you're stressed, dress out a, in a, a mouse. You know, the mice don't like to swim. So if you make them swim, or you, yeah, 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 yeah. Make, I know it sounds mean, but, 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 but the, 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 the tumors grow. Uh, fast, you know, um, and so stress is bad. Uh, um, again, you know, I, I didn't believe this, you know, it was just like, don't talk to me about stress, I'm a doctor, just let's find some drugs, yeah, you know, because uh, uh, that's what doctors do and that's what researchers do, right? Uh, so then um, uh, this guy, Lorenzo Cohen from our group, wanted to do some uh, some, some studies, and, and you know, I was like, this is just garbage, you know, but, but he had money that he could pay us to do the study, so it was like, okay. <laughs> um, and so, so what, we, what he did was he was doing this stress modification, and he was taking blood cells from the, the patient uh, and then giving it to us to see how well those blood cells kill cancer cells. And, and so, I thought, this is never going to work, but we'll do it. They didn't, don't even tell us who's getting the stress modification or not. We want it totally blinded. So it was totally blinded. And so we took these samples before and after their prostate surgery uh, from Lorenzo, and then uh, he had done, before the surgery, either stress modification or real relaxation imagery, kind of what we did this morning uh, for the patients, taught them how to do that versus not. And lo and behold, when we unblinded this, See the, the graphs going up? Those are, that's killing of cancer, and those are the stress management patients. So after that, I was like, and if we didn't do the assays, I wouldn't have believed it, uh, but, but since we did the assays, it was blinded. I was like, wow, there really is some science behind this. So that's when I started looking into it. And, and, then, um, and then furthermore, in my job, I, I have 3,000 people in my group, and there's, <laughs> always something going on. Um, it, it's, if I didn't do my own uh, meditative practice, I, I think I would, I would go crazy. So I've done it myself, and I know how much it allows me to do a whole lot more without worrying about things. I can tell you, I mentor a lot of people through my office every day, and, and most I talk sometimes about the science, but a lot of times I talk about how to deal with life. And, and a lot of that is you know, getting your ego out of things, um, how to uh, look at things, not worrying about what other people think of you, living life from the inside out. Uh, and, and if you do that, there's so much less pathology uh, in the day-to-day -day interactions and everything. So I, I use that every day when, when I mentor people, and, and it's, it's so effective. So that's why I'm a believer on both, both fronts now. I, I, was, I came from a science angle where I didn't believe any of this stuff. Uh, to a place where I, I'm one of the few oncology researchers, I think, that, that's a real proponent now because of, of what I've seen uh, personally and, and through our lab. And this is just hot off the press from two weeks ago. There was a study done in melanoma patients <coughs> where they took patients and they gave them either propranolol or not. Now, propranolol is a drug that blocks adrenaline. And so uh, when they gave them propranolol, and block the adrenaline, those patients had less recurrence. And you can see that from the top graph versus the bottom. And so if you, just by blocking the adrenaline, it is less recurrence. So you say, well, why don't I just screw the meditation? I'll just take propranolol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could do that, except if you did that, you know, you might be dizzy. You might have a problem. And, and guys, you know, it can cause erectile dysfunction. So <laughs> definitely. Choose the meditation. <laughs> Choose the meditation, let me tell you. So, um, all right, so bottom line is stimulating the immune response 
can be amazing. It can cause really great regression of cancers, can practically cure some patients, and we are curing some patients, but we need to do a lot of work because many patients still don't respond to immunotherapy. I really feel that one day we can get everybody to respond, and hopefully that's soon. Um, and then lifestyle changes, we need more data, uh, such as improved diet and stress management. I think it has a role in cancer therapeutics. I really do. I think it has an important role, uh, and it will be a growing role. So uh, that's what I have to say, and I hope that what I said to you was, um, was helpful, but I'm going to quote the Dalai Lama uh, on this one. I saw him at Rice University a few years ago. If what I said wasn't helpful, forget everything I said. <laughs> Thank you.